Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Bunke. I'm at the first Mid-Atlantic 2025 Region Championship event here in Lehigh University. I'm here with one of the uh, classic teams from first Mid-Atlantic team, 341 Miss Daisy. Specifically, I have Declan, Connor, and Kevin, and Simi's gonna be running our operator uh, position for the robot here for this presentation. Uh, super excited to check out their ground intake and everything that makes 341 special here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Kettering University's cutting edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, future-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. All right, first up, uh, Declan, let's, uh, let's get into the mechanical subsystems. Okay, so at the start of the season, one of the big things that we did was the mock game. And so that that's what allowed us to figure out that a ground intake was extremely crucial this year and ensuring that we can get fast cycle times without having to drive a lot. So this floor intake has been really great, especially since not a lot of teams in FMA have it. One of the other things that we took from was being able to score out both sides. Um, we noticed that like being able to drive and not having to turn around when picking up pieces off the reef was really important. So we made sure to add that. We also have this wrist here, which allows us to take from the human player station, um, even though even if our ground intake breaks, um, which has been very useful for us due to sometimes it not working or something happening during a match, we can always rely on going back to the human player station. Um, Declan, let me ask you, um, you talk about redundancy there. You have the ability to intake from the ground as well as from the human player station. Was that a priority in your design from the beginning or was that just a happy coincidence that you realized you could do it? Um, kind of, uh, when we were designing this intake, we found that it going horizontal was something that we really liked. So we ended up needing the wrist for that, but it ended up just being like great for that to, uh, just being able to pick up from the human player station. So it, it, it's just been a great design choice on our end. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, Connor, why don't you run us through the next set of systems? So, um, I'll get more into the like, details of how each thing works. Uh, first, we'll start with the intake. Uh, the number one thing about the intake is we use these passive rollers and ramp geometry to uh, center the coral. So the coral can slide in and is pressured by this, but when the, uh, the wheels push it this way, and since it's at an angle, it falls into the center and then gets centered. So I'll give you a quick demo of how the handoff and the centering works. So it's pretty fast and it's very helpful for scoring. Um, uh, next thing we'll do is the scoring positions. So um, we have L4 here and then L3, L2, and L1. And you'll notice the wrist flips for L1. So that allows us to shoot over existing coral that are already scored. Nice. When we sco uh, and then allows us to pack the trough more full. What do you think was the biggest challenge when designing this entire architecture? Uh, by far the biggest challenge was trying to package the intake uh, next to this elevator without going outside the frame perimeter. Yeah. So uh, we wanted to have a centered elevator so that we could score out of both sides, as Declan mentioned. And the intake was getting really like kind of wide. And so we had to really think about how can we package the climber on this side, the intake on this side, and nothing goes out of the frame perimeter. Uh, and then I'll show you some cool stuff about this arm. So if we could raise the arm up to like algae stow. So one cool thing about the arm is we use a lantern gear for our pivot. So the lantern gear has a very low backlash and uh, just helps us reach all our scoring positions well. Very cool. Uh, right, uh, all right, so uh, Kevin, why don't you walk us through some of the software features about this robot? Of course. So for the software features, you have all of the classics. You have encoders here, you have a limit switch here, and you have a uh, just a CTRE encoder right here, right? An absolute encoder to make sure we know where the position of every single system on this robot is at all times. And what that really allows is for the most technologically impressive or software impressive part of this robot, which is the superstructure. The thing that allows us to move from each one of these positions smoothly. 
right? That composes of two parts. One, collision detection, and two, actually moving to the pieces. The first thing we do is we do collision detection. We see where we want to go next, and we estimate, are we going to collide with anything that's currently on the robot? If we have a piece here, if you could go to L1 for me, please. You'll notice that it turns later, right? Because if you turn too early, you're going to collide with the elevator. You're going to break the strings. It's going to cause issues. That's basically how the entire robot goes. As long as we know when things collide, we can go to every single position in our robot as smoothly as possible. And this really shows in some of our more complex positions. Like if you could go to algae fling real quick. Algae fling. And you can see we can just fling this up immediately. <laughs> And that entire motion is as smooth as possible, right? Your arm is moving slower because you know you're in algae mode. Your elevator moves before your arm and concurrently with your arm in some places to ensure that the arc of the ball is what you get. Kevin, what's the biggest challenge you ran into when programming, programming that entire system? Well, it comes to edge cases, right? There's so many state yeah. transitions that you're not necessarily prepared for. L2 to L1, L3 to L2, L4 to L3, L3 to algae fling, right? There's a lot of things that you have to account for, and that's why we also gave some more capabilities. Simi, could you do a wristlet for me real quick? You can see that we can let the wrist flip to a different position. Do it again, just for fun. If our coil is placed wrongly, just so we can adjust those positions on the fly as well. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. That's uh, one of the most complex systems that I've seen so far this season. You guys should be very, uh, very proud. It's an awesome robot. All right. That's been the Behind the Bumper segment for the 2025 341 Miss Daisy robot here at the First Mid-Atlantic Region Championship. Thank you to Connor, Declan, Kevin, and our operator, Simi, for uh, presenting the robot to us today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free, scan the QR code, or go to altair.com contest for further details. Kettering University's cutting-edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, future-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu first.